My partner Kayla is a huge Pokemon fan. These are all of her original copies of these games and she's played through all of them at least twice, if not more. She's even got Pokemon Pinball here with the little plastic cover for the battery door. And while these games have given her some of her fondest childhood memories, we have never backed up the data from any of these games. I'm gonna interrupt myself here so I can explain how most game cartridges retain your save data. There are many ways electronics can store data. These methods can be split into two categories, volatile and non-volatile. In a game cartridge, the game's code and assets are stored in one or more read-only memory, or ROM chips. These ROM chips are considered non-volatile because they retain this data when they lose power. One drawback to these chips is that you can't change or write new data to them. Because they're read-only, they aren't able to hold your save data. Many cartridge-based games store your save data in SRAM, which is simple to work with and relatively cheap. The drawback to this SRAM is that unlike ROM chips, it is volatile, so it loses that data when it loses power. If your game was wiped every time your Game Boy powered off, there wouldn't be any point in saving that data. So manufacturers include coin cell batteries, like this one, on the board. When the game is not in use, this battery provides a small amount of current, enough to keep the data on the SRAM chips so you can load it the next time you play. There are some examples where other technologies are used to save your game. Sonic the Hedgehog 3 for the Mega Drive notably uses a technology called FE-RAM to save the game without relying on a battery backup. And it seems more and more games were using modern flash memory to save progress during the Game Boy Advance's life cycle. Metroid Fusion and Metroid Zero Mission, for example, were both re-released at some point with their battery-backed save systems replaced with FE-RAM. Now back to you, me. I would love to be able to back up her original save data just so we don't have to worry about it. You know, if we ever want to come back to it later or just relive some memories, I want that to work. So I would like to use a special cartridge right here. Now, this one's called the Mega Memory Card, and different manufacturers had a bunch of different versions of these. This is just one example. This is by Interact. And what this cartridge does is you plug this into your Game Boy, and then you plug your game into this extra cartridge slot up here. And this has a more modern version of non-volatile RAM on board. In other words, this doesn't rely on a battery in order to keep its save data. So back in the day, you would have used this to essentially have more than one save file on something like your Pokemon game. These only have one save slot on them, so to speak. So if you wanted to replay them without throwing out your old data, you could back up your data to this mega memory card like this, save it to this cartridge, then start a new game over here. And when you got sick of this game, you could reload your old save back onto it and then continue from there. It's a little clunky, but it's a good solution. And it has essentially an extra use in the modern day because we can use this to back the game up, Remove the battery from the board, which will clear the save. Put a new battery back in, and then put this cartridge back in here and write the old save data back to it after we've replaced the battery. Pretty cool. Now, I don't have a bunch of solder tab watch batteries on hand. I would have to order some for basically all of these. Actually, I'm not even sure what the save technology is like in this cartridge. But if we are able to back up the data now, we don't really have to worry about when we replace the batteries. It would be really cool if all of these games had their save data intact. So what I have to do, rather than backing them all up and just hoping for the best, I'm going to put each of them into my Game Boy Color and we will see if the save data is still there. And if it is, then we'll back it up. So this will be like a little, uh, little mystery box of Pokemon data. These games haven't been played in a while and I personally have never cleaned them. So I am gonna hit each of them with a little contact cleaner and a Q-tip before I put them in my Game Boy, just to keep everything nice. Another good reason to give these an extra cleaning actually is because this mega memory card here is way outside of Nintendo's original specs when they designed the Game Boy and all the hardware that works with it. You've got one point of contact with the Game Boy here, and then you have this other cartridge slot here, and then the game has to fit in there. And this all has to work um, and I guess you could say it's a little janky to use a scientific term. So giving all these a quick clean before we go ahead is just gonna make sure that we have the best chance for success. Kayla takes really good care of her stuff. And even so, just from age, you can see that this Q-tip here is a little bit dirty. It's not that bad, but this is why we go ahead and clean things anyway when we haven't used them in a while. Or if we just don't remember the last time we cleaned them. And then while I'm at it, before we start, I'm gonna clean the contacts on the Mega Memory Card as well. 
This I got from eBay ages ago, and I, I probably never actually cleaned it. Now, I do remember it working, and you'll probably get to see that I have some backup save data for a bunch of my Game Boy games on here, hopefully. And if it doesn't work, then we won't get to see that, and this video will have been for nothing. All right, let's see what's behind door number one. I've got to hold the screen at just the right angle to reflect light back into the camera lens so that you can see the screen properly. And uh, this is just an authentic Game Boy experience. This is, this is how we all did it back before screens were backlit. Oh, heck yeah. All right, continue. Holy moly. Okay, so she must have restarted this one at some point, but we've got plenty of save data here. Let's go ahead and back this one up. We'll call it Kayla. Red. And that just took a few seconds. You can see it here in our list of backups, along with my copy of Donkey Kong Land and Wario Land. I actually have to update the Wario Land one because I have since gotten a perfect save on that and I know that this is not a copy of that. And we're ready to rinse and repeat. Let's give this a quick clean. And look at that, more save data, fantastic. All right, let's back this one up. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is there is this switch on top of the Mega Memory Card. If you flip the switch to the other position here, I believe that that bypasses the Mega Memory Card, so you can just boot the game directly and make sure that that is connected as well. So if you'll see here, yeah, we know that Pokemon Blue is connected successfully because we can boot it. And then when it's time to back it up, you can just flip the switch back and you don't have to disconnect and reconnect everything. And hit this with a quick clean. All right, now this time, we'll just flip the switch on the Mega Memory Card, connect to this, and then that way we can make sure that the game data is still there and that we have a good connection all in one go. Definitely do not flip that switch while the Game Boy is on. I don't wanna know what happens if you do that. I remember that totally blew my mind that there were voice samples coming out of a Game Boy when I got this game as a kid. I know it does not sound great, but uh, I'm still kind of impressed by it to this day. Oh, no. <sighs> All right, looks like the data in this one is gone. Even though this copy of yellow would have been manufactured later than the copies of red and blue that we just looked at, it looks like the battery on it has died. I don't think it's likely that someone put this game in, wiped the memory, and then just didn't start a new game. So just goes to show it can be hard to predict what is and is not going to work anymore when you start delving into these old games. I was going to say I'd be more confident about gold and silver over here because those were obviously manufactured later, but if I'm not mistaken, the battery in these that holds the save data is also responsible for the real-time clock, so that may put more of a drain on it and give those batteries a shorter life, but we'll take a look and see. Alright, let's check out gold. I skipped Gen 2 when I was a kid, I had a copy of blue, and then I got yellow, and then I knew that I wasn't smart enough to finish either of them, so I just kind of gave up. I figured, why well, get the new ones if I uh, can't finish the old ones? So uh, these are completely unfamiliar to me. I haven't even played them in emulation before. Uh, looks like this one is dead. All right, Pokemon Silver. Uh, looks like this one is also done for, at least until we replace the battery, but that data is gone. Now, Pokemon Pinball I just grabbed because it was on theme and I've never played this game with Rumble before. But while we're here, let's give it a quick clean and see if there is any save data left on this copy. I also don't know how this is going to fit on the Mega Memory Card because of the Game Boy Color's battery hump. Uh, this is obviously a taller cartridge than standard, so I will try and be very gentle. And if it doesn't want to fit, I'm not going to force it. Uh, I hate it, but it didn't really require much force to go on. It's making contact. 
And we can see we've got plenty of Pokedex data in here, so this game still has valid data. Let's back it up. Well, it was worth a try, and we got to save some of them, so I, I guess partial success? And just for fun, let's pop a AAA in here and try up Pokemon Pinball with Rumble. Ooh. Um, well... It isn't leaking, so that's good, but I'm going to assume that this is dead. Be very, very gentle with this door because I feel like these are always either broken or missing. Or probably missing because they broke at some point. Wow, I know everyone says it's really hard to play one of these while recording it at the same time. And uh, I used to think it was a skill issue, but um, this, this is actually a little challenging. Oh my gosh! The rumble's pretty strong! <laughs> Well, we can consider that a win. 